serial labor hours needed for April. And then we're going to take those across. Once again, we're using the labor hours not because we're calculating the labor like we did here. We're calculating the overhead based on labor being the allocation. And we're going to say it's going to cost us 2.7. We came up with that number in, in, prior as an estimate based on labor hours. Then we can uh, say this times the 2.7. That's going to give us our variable overhead. So we're going to copy that across. We can sum that this way. And then our fixed overhead is just going to be straightforward, whatever it is. In this case, it's just depreciation. So we're going to say fixed overhead, 20000 That doesn't change. That's going to be the same all the way across. We're going to sum that up for the quarter. And that will give us 60000 on the quarter. Then we're going to say the total overhead then is this plus this. And we could take that all the way across for the entire quarter. Next, we will look at the selling expenses on the budget. So we have the budgeted selling, and that's going to be down here in our information sales representative commission as 8% of sales and are paid in a monthly uh, sales. The sales manager has a, has a fixed rate of 3000 So we have commission. So in order to get commission, we're going to first calculate the budgeted sales, and that's going to come all the way up here from our budgeted sales. So we have for April this number, tab, and then I'm going to scroll up here uh, for, for May, we've got this number, tab. Then I'm going to scroll up here, and for June, we have this number, and enter. And we're paying 8% uh, on the sales, so we're going to say 0 0.08, 8%, .08, and we'll copy that across. Notice it is formulated using the uh, percent format up here, and that uh, then will say this times the 8%. Uh, that means that we're going to pay 39114 in sales commission. We can copy that across, and that will sum up like so. And then for the salaries, it's just a 3000 fixed salary per month to uh, the sales manager. So then we're going to have this plus this gives us our total sales budget for this period. Copy that across. Then we've got to sum up the three, quarter, the three months in the quarter. Not the, that. And that will give us our total sales commission then we'll take a look at the general and administrative expenses for the this time period we have so we're going to start off with uh the salaries so we have down here the the general administrative salaries monthly general rate is twelve thousand, so it's just straight twelve thousand for the salaries and then uh then salaries and nine percent monthly interest on the long-term note all right so we can start off with the 12 that's going to be straightforward all the way across and then we're going to have to take a look at the note and see how much is in there. So, so our note is up here. We've got uh, the 500000 in the long-term note in this case. So 500000 and And notice it's 0.9%. So if I move that two places over, it's 0 0.009. So 0 0.009 gives us the 4005 So if we do that here, we're going to say it's, it's going to equal the 500,000 times 0 0.009. And notice they did something a little bit funny here. They gave us the monthly interest rate. And again, usually usually you don't see an interest rate like 0 0.9 because usually we don't give the monthly rate. We give the yearly rate and then you'd have to back it out into either a monthly rate or figure out you know the, the monthly rate. So that's a little bit different format that we've seen interest sometimes. And we're going to copy that across and sum. And then we could sum them up this way. And there we have our general and admin. Once again, we could check our numbers by highlighting this way. And we get the 49.5. And we can also highlight this way and we get the 49.5. Next, we'll take a look at the cash budget. In order to take a look at the cash budget, we'll look at uh, letter H, which says the company expects 30% of sales to be cash and the remaining 70% on credit. Receives are collected in full in the following month. So first we're going to start off with the sales then and see how much cash we're going to get, how much is going to be on credit. So we're going to say uh, the total sales then back up here for April is this tab. And then for May we have this tab. And then for uh, June we have this and enter. And then we got the cash that we're going to receive then in the month of the sale equals this times 0.3 30% that 30% there and then once again we could just copy that across and it should it should do the relative point let's double check it yeah that times 0.3 that's what we want 
And then we could subtract this out like this, the debt minus this, or we could take the total times 0.7. That's how much we're going to get on credit. And once again, we can copy that across. And of course, these two should then equal the total up here because it's 3070 broken out as uh, shown here. Then we're going to use the cash budget to calculate the total cash receipts from customers. So the, the cash that we're going to get in the current month, we just calculated up here. That's the cash sales for each month. So we're going to say that equals this uh, 146,678. We can copy that across. And then the remember that the credit sales we're going to receive in the following month. So we know that this credit sale, we're going to see April's here. And the sales that we made on credit in May, we're going to receive in June. And then the credit sales in April, we're going to have to get from the accounts receivable on the balance sheet, the current balance sheet. Cash collections from the prior month will be coming from the balance sheet over here. So we're going to say that the cash collections are going to be the uh, 348. I'm sorry, 342, 248 from the accounts receivable, 342, 248 uh, that are in the balance sheet for March. And then if we sum that up, we have the cash collections like so, total cash receipts. Then we can go down here to the cash budget. So for the cash budget, we're going to start off with the beginning cash in April. Beginning cash coming from the balance sheet. It's the any balance for March. It's the beginning balance for April of 40000 then we have the receipts we just calculated up here. So we're going to say we're going to receive another uh, 488,925. We can then sum those up like so, summing those, and then we're going to scroll down to the payments for raw materials. Now we're going to get most of this information from our data up here. The raw materials is a little bit different. You would think that we bring it up here and we would be getting it from our raw materials budget here. And we would because that's how much we're going to purchase, except for the fact that that's how much we're going to purchase on account and we are paying for it all in the following months. So even though we're purchasing this in, in April, we're really paying for the stuff that we purchased last time, which is gonna be in the AP in this case. So in this case, for raw materials, we're gonna take the first number from here, being uh, the uh, raw materials that we purchased last time, the payable of 205. Then we'll take the, uh, let's see, the payments for direct labor equals I'm going to scroll up and, and look for the labor then. We just did the materials. Here's the labor. Here's the payments for the labor. 147,750. Enter. And we could start to copy these across if we want to. It's going to be the same for the rest of the months. So if I, if I highlight this up here, we're going to say that's going to be the same. And we could also do that for some of these here. That, this is going to be the same across. Although, you know, this calculation is going to be the same across. But we don't know this. This is going to be the ending balance down here. Is going to be the beginning balance here so we could copy some of these across as we go uh, if you want to know what this one where's this one's going to be if we're looking at may then and if we go up to the to the materials and we scroll up to the materials we're saying that the raw materials then are we're going to pay them in april we're going to pay in may for the month of april so that's going to be the uh, 198 there and then we can copy that one across and that one's once one month off because of the uh, payable process the direct labor, we're going we're gonna to obviously pay within the month that it's incurred. The uh, payments for the variable overhead equals, and then we could scroll up to the variable overhead. So we're looking for the overhead. Here's the overhead, the variable portion being the 26.5. And again, I can just copy these across because it's going to be related the same. So we could copy these across for these. And then the sales commission are going to equal. We can go up to the uh, sales commission being in the factory uh, of the selling area. And we have the sales commission of this 39114 just for the sales commission. Once again, we're going to copy that across because it's going to be the same going forward. We're going to take the sales salary. We're going to scroll up to the sales salary. Once again, sales salary is going to be the same, 3000 across. So we can enter that and we can copy that across. Then we have the general and admin. So we're going to say equals. We're going to scroll up to the general and admin. And we're looking for the salaries in this case. So here's the salaries. Enter. We can copy that across the dividends. Uh, they have a note down here on the dividends. And the, in this case, they're going to be 10,000. And that's going to happen in the month of May. So in the month of May, we can put 10,000 here. That's all we got for the month. I mean, for the quarter. And then the loan interest is going to be down here. 
uh, we have a note up here saying that we're going to pay 120, we're going to pay 1% on the note. So if we scroll up here and we can say the short term note is here, we currently have a short term note of 12. So that's going to be interest of uh, 12,000 times 0.01 or $120 on the note here. And then we have the long term note. We say equals or plus and we scroll up to the, uh, I believe it's under general and administrative. The general and administrative selling expenses. Where did that go? Oh, here we go. The 4005 for the interest for long term note. And once again, we can copy that across. It's going to be the same going across. Equipment, we did purchase equipment and we're going to say that's a one time purchase. And we say down here that we're purchasing 130,000 for cash. So purchase of equipment is just going to be in June in this case, 130,000. Then we have the disbursement. So I'm going to sum this up and see if this comes out to what it should. So we're going to say the sum of, and it's just the disbursements are going to be this 200 down to here. And I'm going to keep the, the un, the cell that has nothing in it so we can copy it across. And then we have that, and then we have the payments, uh, preliminary cash, the receipts minus the disbursements, and then we have the additional loan. And what we're saying there is that we want a minimum balance of forty thousand, according to Jay here. And if it goes below that, we're gonna we're gonna pull more money out. Uh, if we have excess cash, we're gonna pay off the loan from the minimum balance from the prior period. In this case, that minimum balance be twelve thousand. So because we have uh, more than the minimum of 40, we can afford to pay off the loan that we needed for the minimum balance in the prior month. Therefore, I'm going to put a negative 12,000 and we're going to pay that off and sum this up. And we come up to the 83,347 on the beginning balance. That's going to be same, the same as what the, uh, the May balance will be at the end. So I'm going to say this equals the beginning equals the ending balance. And there we have that. And now we have a correct number here. And if we go through these, once again, that, that copied, we copied that over. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Good, good, good interest. All right. The purchase, no purchase here. So the disbursements, we can copy this over. I'm going to copy that over here. And then we can copy this over. And uh, once again, we have no uh, balance that is below 40. So we don't need to take another loan out in this case. So we have no activity here, and we can then copy this across. So now we're going to say that our ending balance for May is going to be our beginning balance for June. So this number is correct. This is correct. This is correct. This is correct. So we can copy this across. And then our uh, receipts minus our payments, we can copy that across. This is the calculation. And now you can see we're under 40000 So we could do the calculation this. We, we need to bring that up to 40000 So we could say we need to bring this to forty thousand because that's the